Good morning, folks. This is the USDA's Winter Agricultural Survival Map. It was brand new as of January, but don't bother getting one as they say climate change has already made it obsolete. We're warming up too quickly. But after the winter Europe and India took last year, I wouldn't exactly go bet the farm next five months. It's always beautiful when Sakurajima blows, has done so periodically for a while now, but this wasn't yesterday's primary eruption. Guatemala's mountain of fire has sent tens of thousands of people evacuating from nearby. There are four other volcanoes on watch within 250 miles. We showed that strange buoy event yesterday just south of Alaska. This one is slightly west of yesterday's. Four meter deviation in 15 seconds is noteworthy, but nothing about which to panic. Quick outlook. Cold coming to the U.S., colder anyway. It is September and we're headed into fall. And while I knew of some strange rain totals down under, I had not heard much about the Queensland coastal drought. Opposite news for Texas holds all but two of the precipitation records set yesterday. Some serious short-range data points there, but look on the bright side, Texas. It could be a lot worse. Ladies and gentlemen, 333 kilometer per hour wind gusts is over 200 miles an hour. This is Super Typhoon Sanba, and the southernmost Japanese islands lie right in the center of its path. Coming over and taking a quick look at quakes, Six-pointer in Indonesia this morning registered as high as a 6.7 on some graphs, 5.1 on the southern mid-Atlantic ridge, and yet another North Pole tremor, very shallow as well. Look at the red dots. Last time you saw a gamma burst, it came from Cassiopeia on September 11th. This is what she looks like now, and no, those aren't all new bursts. They had gone back and added some older ones not already on there. We had two last night, one from Virgo, one from Leo. Updating yesterday's magnetic connection story, Earth is still primarily connected around the backside, but this one little connection point is drifting further west, and I think we're shifting. Yesterday I showed the solar wind and told you that these could be filament eruption effects or a coronal hole, but that it was hard to tell. Well, we can tell now. Soho's 48-hour solar wind data shows this density spike preceding the speed ramp up, like the fast solar wind was a broom sweeping up the slower particles to all hit at once. That's a coronal hole impact mystery solved. Another of yesterday's gems, this filament eruption blocked by Earth eclipsing the SDO. Both NASA and NOAA have added the eruption to their endless spirals. You can see the ejection coming out towards Earth here, and a glancing blow is expected. The north half of the Earth-facing solar disk is a bit boring right now, a couple dark coronal holes and a small active region turning in while another turns away. The real fun is on the south right now. For three days I have berated NOAA over their classification of this active region down here. Well folks, they got it today. Two separate regions, and the leader is Beta Gamma. Look at the intensity gram. The big holes are leading spots and should have given away that two active regions were present. When we switch to the magnetogram, you see the intermixing of polarity right here causing the beta gamma class, although it is weaker than it was yesterday. The bright areas turning in from the left are those active regions we just analyzed. The southern half certainly has the bigger coronal holes. Mercury heliocentrically opposes Uranus tomorrow and we are 17 hours from the new moon. It's about 5.45 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Eyes open, folks. That's the news. Be safe.